if you were to give yourself as a young person what piece of advice, what would it be? But see, th this is why I disagree with, uh, with what you said earlier, Spetsnaz, and, and you wouldn't have agreed with you that communication is paramount. And uh, I, I don't think that that's enough. You, you can have a perfect way of expressing every little thought that you have in your mind and expressing what you want. But ultimately, if it's not reinforced for your actions, if you can ask for the world or for, for very simple things, if at the end of the day, those things aren't being done and aren't being met, it doesn't matter how well you communicate. Not having that feedback loop of, I asked for this, but for some reason it's not being enforced, or you're just here in front of me agreeing with what I'm saying, but at the end of the day, you're not doing anything about it. I think that, that uh, that's, a, that's a deeper layer of lack of respect than just the, the, just the getting along part. But you said something important there, Karu, in the sentence, like if you ask for something continually and they nod their head and say, oh, yeah, I'll do that for you, but they never do. The point is you ask for it, you communicate it. But if you don't, like a lot of guys don't even communicate, they just cross their fingers and they hope magically relationships just stay intact. Uh, at least, at the very least, um, direct language and asking for something and the person saying they will is a barometer to kind of say, I said this and you didn't deliver over and over again. So you communicate and say, well, next time, don't say you will do it if you don't. And that gives you like a real life thing that you related to each other with as a basis for you to th say, well, am I going to tolerate this or not? But if you don't say anything, you got no basis because she could say, well, you never said anything. Like if you're not happy and then you just blow up at one point and you've had enough, she's got every right to say, well, I didn't know. Because you never said anything. Yeah. If she decides to or not, you you don't have much control other than seeing if she uh, if her words mean anything. If she does act and you know uh, practically love you, not just verbally. So at the very least, I think communication still is the only way to see if it can work. And obviously, if if nothing comes back, if it's just words, but at least you communicated. And I think every guy, before you can communicate, you have to know what you want. And every young guy should sit down and write down what he thinks is important to him. Exactly. You know, what things are important to him. And these are the things you discuss with this girl. So, you, you know, there's never any doubt about these things here are important to me. I agree 100% Rocket. And... You know, that, that is, that's probably ancient, probably the ancient Greeks were talking about this stuff, but I think the, the mistake that probably the vast majority of young men make is they don't sort through this stuff in their head first. They don't know what they want. They don't have a clear picture of what they're pursuing, what their life is going to look like. They, 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 they don't take the time to do it. They don't realize how important it is. And then they just kind of stumble in and out of relationships. Well, they don't have respect for their elders. Um, ha they don't have grandfathers and elders that they hang around to um, be leaned in the direction of being a, a person that they would respect themselves. So they just hang around people their own age. They they hang around a relatable dysfunctional, confused Spurg like themselves. And they think they can figure it out by talking about their fantasy worlds, you know, men and women like video games, rather than talking to someone who's very different, who can calibrate them more to the real world, who can calibrate them to experience, right? So uh, I, I noticed this when I was younger. I, I started to get, I, I started to notice a big shift from when I was young, uh, even in comic books, you know, there was Superman, there was Wonder Woman, and then it became Superboy. And like they, they made our heroes our own age with dysfunctions. And, you know, Spider-Man has problems with girls and girls don't like him and he's insecure. It's like, I don't fucking want that. Like I used to look up to Superman who was stoic and he didn't really, and the faults he had was where to give his sympathy. He tried to do good and then he was betrayed. And then he learned a lesson of who to trust. Like there were these really strong examples of how to discern things as an adult man. And you wanted to be him. He was the father figure. He was the mentor. Now it's like you're mentored and taught by people 
as dysfunctional and confused as you are. And it's, oh, it's relatable. It's relatable. So are the old people, but you also had to add the bitterness when it comes to the older generation as well. Hey, we, hey. We, well, yeah, I, I was kind of jabbing at you, Rocket, but that's a, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, to be fair, and I've talked to, to Boffin about this and, and to you in some capacity as well, human, how many people do genuinely want to watch uh, functional relationships? I, I've sent no. you a couple of channels of uh, of people properly communicating and talking about the issues that they have in their relationships, how they function, uh, how their life is set up, and most people aren't interested in that. You look at the number of subscribers that they have, nobody watches on yeah. average compared to the bigger channels. Everybody wants the drama, and everybody thinks that that's how life is supposed to be, how life is supposed to be. It's relatable, too. Would you guys like to hear the poll at the bar I took? Sure. I, I asked, uh, there were several older gentlemen, a couple of older women, and a uh, uh, younger uh, bar girl uh, behind the bar. And I asked them, I said, I'm going to talk with some gentlemen tonight. And if you were to give yourself as a young person what piece of advice, what would it be? And every one of the older guys had something. They had like... Uh, to, to start out working young in the trades or something, so you always have something to go back to. Another guy said, don't be afraid to start at the bottom. If you get good at something, you'll go up quickly through the ranks. But the surprising thing was, not a single one of the ladies had any piece of advice to give to a younger girl. That's not surprising to me. Well, at first, I thought the, the advice they might want to give would make them feel guilty about something. So, you know, tell the girl not to do this. That was the first reason I thought. But I, I, I asked them a couple of times, you know, throughout the afternoon, and they, they never had anything. It was kind of shocking to me. Well, why is it shocking? I mean, if you look at their age range and if they even take slightly good care of themselves, they can just go on autopilot for the vast majority of their lives. Yeah, it's not surprising to me as much as it is sad. In terms of just empathy, right? Most of them out there are just narcissists who just live in their own bubble. They lack any kind of empathy to, to understand how they're affecting Joe, Bob, or Bill. And so with that lack of empathy, what would want her to develop empathy growing up as a rich kid? who has everything thrown at her. Realistically, if you're born there and you're just pummeled with, you're a princess, Beyonce tells you you're great, you're, uh, you know, men are the problem all the time. Gimme, 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 I'm entitled. I will always think of myself as a nine out of 10 and all my friends will confirm that I'm a nine out of 10. It doesn't matter if I'm objectively a three out of 10. What would make you be better? Nothing, they don't think they need to improve. And on top of that, Women don't like responsibility and they don't feel guilt. And so it's kind of, you've, you've created, a, 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 it's female nature on steroids and it's been given a narrative that just kind of keeps them there. It's, it's locked the door to being humble, to be self-reflective, to admit and say, you know, I screwed up. This is why you don't have women mentoring other women saying, you know, don't do what I did. When do you hear older women mentoring younger women saying, you know, I put my hand up in all humbleness. I screwed up. Don't go down this path. I can see you going down the path I did. I was like you. I can see a lot of you in me. Don't go down that path to sort of eat humble pie to the service of like the next generation or someone who's a younger version of you. Even, even having, having some sympathy for yourself, seeing a younger version of you and wanting to do better by you in a younger body. They just don't have that capacity. Older women would rather not admit they were wrong, take other younger women down with them rather than look bad in their eyes. They just can't. Uh, they find it very hard to do it. I haven't met many women but, who will be um, honest about those sort of things. But they do, human, but not in the direction that you appreciate. You're thinking about it from a male perspective. Look at the gold digger community and you'll see them pushing each other like you can't believe and giving them advice on how to manipulate, how to act better for the guys they're with, how to get richer guys. You, they do. They do, but not in a way that you would uh, 
uh, you would find particularly present. Yeah, amongst each other they do, but it's the two-facedness in front of other people. If they were that way all the time in front of everyone else, everyone would understand the 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 the, the female gold digging animal and take her as she is. But it's the the lying that people don't appreciate, like the PUA community and Fresh and Fit. I, I agree with your perspective and assessment, one hundred percent human. Because I I think to the the women that I've known throughout my life uh, personally. And I, I, th there's not one that comes to mind that I can ever remember talking to a young woman or even a, a, a group of people and, and admitting that they made a mistake. They screwed up. They made a bad decision at some point in their life other than to, you know, blame the guy that they got involved with. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll take responsibility for getting into the relationship, but it was always the guy's fault. But I've, I've never seen uh, uh, an older woman sit down with a younger woman and offer any type of practical counseling where she says, you know, I, I probably shouldn't have done that or it was a mistake for me to do this. I, I've never seen it. I, I have seen women admit to mistakes. and, and a, Now, this may be a part of what we're talking about may pretty much be a Western culture thing because the Chinese girl I asked her, how did your first marriage fail? And she immediately just said, it was my fault. I, I was just too arrogant. And and I'm 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 learning. And she also admitted to uh, being a poor mother to her daughter and, and said she's wow. working on that. And I was very surprised. And I thought, gosh, that's you know, I wonder if that's part of their culture, more of, of honestly admitting when you're at fault so you can improve. I, I'm not sure because she's the only Chinese I ever truly knew, you know. And uh, as far as the gold diggers, well, you'd have to include Thai hookers, too. They probably have a school for that there. I, I think that's the, the, the double dose of negativism that, that fem, uh, feminism has has brought into the world as well. Because I think women won't have these frank discussions with younger women about where they screwed up. And we've also created a condition where men are no longer allowed to counsel women and, and young women and say, look, you know, I'm an older guy. And if you do this with your life, these are the, these are the things you're going to screw up. I think when a guy tries to talk to a woman about mistakes they can make in their life they're they're automatically stamped with you know patriarchy misogyny control you're not allowed to have the discussions to to try to counsel young women agree with you there i've i've had that you know loud screaming thrown in my face they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear a man telling them anything now yep yep look we can all agree that men and women are different what I don't like is the, the hypocrisy and the lying. Don't tell me one thing, but you don't believe in it. Don't tell me, um, don't be the chick that wants to start her diet on Monday, but that's not the person she is. Don't uh, be the person that admits she was wrong, but really it's in your nature to just do it over and over and over again. And I think the, the I keep coming back to the only thing you have left is exercising communication with them all the time if something odd pops up in front of you and her you notice something you you notice her slipping you notice her lying you notice her forgetting contradicting you don't let things slip and communication brings it you know brings you back to being on the same plane again and for well, some I mean guys it's boring um but it's i think it's about the only thing that can keep it making sense for as long as you can realize it's not and i know why because I'm talking about it. You know, along with communication, you have to have your convictions. Don't, if you don't want to know something, don't ask it. And, and if you do ask it and you're told something and it's past your boundaries, you have to have the courage to walk away. I think that's one of the biggest problems with young guys is they, they lack the courage to hold their boundaries. 
Why do yeah. you think there's this uh, stigma in regards to communication in the sense that even with someone that you become intimate, there are certain topics that people don't want to breach? The fear of knowing the truth. No, fear of losing the person, of being alone. Yeah. Yes. Well, if you know the truth, you have to make a decision. <laughs> truth is, uh, at, the, at the very least, it's clarifying. Like, all of us have, can probably think back to moments where we really didn't want to, uh, like, reveal a subject or talk about it, and we knew we had to. And when it finally was talked about, or when the Band-Aid was ripped off, it might have ended badly, but there was like a, a, a liberation. Truth will always liberate you, but the liberation may not be, oh, things are better in our relationship. It might be it ended, but yep. I feel better in some weird way. Like there's less pressure. I'm not suffocating anymore. I can breathe. So the liberation may not be positive, but even you know losing the person, it's still liberating. There's a lot of truth to the saying that the truth will set you free. It's really the liberation point of what the truth does. In a sense, it's weird because I feel that the progression stack of a relationship is kind of flipped in a way. Because if you if you evolve to the point where you become intimate with someone and you do certain things, to me at least, the idea of communication is kind of lower in the stack. It has it has higher priority. So if you've already been been on your knees in front of me, I'm 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 assuming at least that. As a guy, you're open enough to discuss any type of uh, any type of issue that you may have with the relationship. Like we've already done nastier things than have a conversation. But e even in those situations, I see, uh, especially males being very reticent when it comes to expressing themselves, which to me always was baffling. Like I, I didn't care. I, I always assumed that. Uh, expressing your problems or grievances that takes priority in front of everything because otherwise there's no comfort you're constantly walking on eggshells and that's not a that's not a good situation to be in it's not comfortable it's not fun you're constantly stressing about it those stressors become bigger and bigger you get things added to the stack because now you have yesterday's resentment and you get today's resentment and now she also forgot to wash the dishes or she didn't have time to do something around the house. And, it, it, and it's just a pressure cooker waiting to blow. I think uh, today uh, there's a different relationship between intimacy as well, because you, you talk about, you know, um, you've been naked in front of me in the bedroom. You've been on your knees. That's as intimate as it can be. I think today it's just entertainment. That's just people having fun. Uh, people, you know, you see strangers doing it. There's nothing intimate and personal about it. A and if anything, I think people avoid intimacy by having sex, uh, but they call it intimacy. Uh, so it's it scares them to death to have a conversation about what really matters. It scares them to death to uncover the five-year-old them and talk from that p place of this is really me. These are my insecurities. This is what I find important. This is what I'm unsure about. This is the real, you know, the the the, the core of me that I, I may not share with everybody. So I think they they use, uh, I think a lot of people use kind of uh, sex and 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 the the relationships they have today as a way of avoiding intimacy or relationships because a they probably don't know how to do it. Everything's kind of uh, curated online, so you almost manufacture your relationships rather than show up as you, and seeing who has the courage to also show up as them. Everyone's showing up as a front. So I just uh, I don't think people re can relate as flesh and blood human beings anymore. And no one goes out there and touches grass, as Karu said. So you mean to say taking advice from single guys about relationships is a bad idea? I used to hear quite often, what? You got married twice? That's really stupid. And I was sitting there thinking, Sonny, you haven't even had a girlfriend yet. <laughs> I, I see a difference between guys pretending to mentor other guys and listening to them. Like, I don't like listening to guys saying, no, no, if you do anything other than the path I set for you, you're a fool and I'm going to shame you. Rather than being sympathetic to, you know, Joe, Bill or Bob, what they, what they actually want to do in their lives. 
You, you know, that's so true because I look at what I've learned in, say, the past 10 years. And if I would have had any inkling back then, I would have never married my first wife with the knowledge I have now. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even have talked to her for more than a few seconds. And my second wife, I actually think that I could have circumvented the disaster that had became our marriage. I've never actually seen a video from anyone in the manosphere um, actually discuss the stages of a relationship. You know, the different stages that you go through, like in, in terms of trust. Like it, there's, there's different stages of affection and intimacy. But nobody's ever talked about that. They've never gone that far. It's just surface level. It's just how to get a woman mm. or how to go monk. It's just memes. But Spetsen asks, how many of them are in a relationship? Well, from most of the guys that I know, um, if you're talking younger guys in their 20s, very few. And it's, they don't have options. I mean, there are no sexual options. Um, the majority of guys that I know, um, they're also not seeking relationships. And it's, you know, part and parcel is because there are no opportunities. And those frameworks aren't there anymore. Um, the guys that are doing well are guys that come from specific cultures where the family actually assists with that. Um, but without those structures, yeah, no. The majority of guys are, I know in their 20s, no, they have no options. I'm sympathetic to what the average world is and the messages that sort of imbue that perspective, but also the, the way you approach things, your own self-belief and what you determine to be your boundaries and how you view yourself and what you are going to do and what you're going to say. And if I speak up directly in communication with this chick, I don't care that she doesn't agree with me. I want to be clear. I want to be real, you know? And I'm not discounting that a lot of guys have negative messages. I, I know that's a massive reason why guys are invisible and um, they, they don't really get much out of life at all. You know, there's a lot of truth in that direct communication like that, not caring what the other person is going to think of what you say. That's actually a huge dating tip because I find when you talk that way, women will get much more comfortable with you because they actually feel like you're being honest and, and they kind of drop some of their guard it, it also um matters how you view that term i think rocket because for a long time i really resisted and, and i still do not caring what other people think because i do people i care about i do care what they think because i care about them so it's an oxymoron because it's kind of like when the pickup artists say, you got to pretend not to care about the woman you care about. That's where you have all the power. And it's kind of stupid. You've got to play this stupid psychological game with yourself where you drive yourself nuts. Like if I care about something, I care about it. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Oh, yeah. Human, I didn't mean that in something like, uh, you know, I'm going to say all women are bitches, you know, nothing mm -hmm. like that. I meant uh, just to be honest about things. Uh, not not that they would be insulting or anything, but just uh, that's my personal opinion on that subject. And and uh, to just be honest, I found that uh, people in general, not just women, will get much more comfortable with you, and they'll they'll speak more honestly too. You know what helped me um, frame uh, that point of view better? Because, like I said, I, I really didn't like. Um, don't care about what other people think. I think a healthier point of uh, a way that helped me frame it was there's nothing wrong with me speaking up. My point of view matters. So it's not so much I don't care what they think. I do care about what people think that respect me and that can appreciate I have my own point of view. But I have the right to speak. I have the right to say something. I matter. So I think that is a healthier point of view rather than I don't give a shit what people think or feel. Yeah, I think I, I could have phrased it better. Instead of saying I don't care, I could have said I don't fear what people think. Yes, yes. I'm not faulting you because what you mentioned is a very, very common term that people throw around as part of like self-help, self-esteem. But I think it's actually really narcissistic and it causes a lot of problems. You basically, you can't connect with people 
that the problem you're having with being comfortable with people is that you don't give a shit about them. Of course, you're not going to relate to people if you don't give a shit about what people think. It's really stupid. And I don't think people understand how that phrase, it's supposed to be self-help, but it pushes you in the opposite direction. There's another dynamic, I think, you know, as I, as I listen to these conversations amongst younger guys, I think there's another dynamic in play that I think older guys might uh, it it might not be immediately apparent. You, you it, and it's kind of subtle, but this whole idea of um, being able to communicate and the confidence to speak up, uh, you know, it really it, be willing to interject into the conversation at hand. I think the the dynamic that a lot of older guys don't understand is that when we were young, we were accustomed to, to the idea of competing with other men. It, that that was the world that we grew up in. We knew, you know, sports, business. We we were acclimated to the whole concept of of competing with other men, and and I I think we were a lot more likely to to verbalize what we were thinking and and we might even be willing to to get into a fight about you know what we felt strongly about but the dynamic that wasn't in play when when the the older guys here were young is that we weren't competing with women and that's a strange dynamic i think in the world today because not only are younger guys competing with other younger guys, but they're also in competition with women now. And, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to imagine what it's like dealing with the totality of not only being in competition with men for resources, for work, for, for mates, but then also this new dynamic of being in competition with women what will that to go bare knuckles and you have to wear 16 ounce glove yeah yeah it's not just the competition with women the way men compete with each other now is in a female way too so it's not like the whole yeah. rule book is very female like i think now like it kind of makes me cringe a little bit where, say, even my YouTube channel, you know, like my video, like me, give me a like, validate me. Like, like it's kind of very female. So the whole uh, measuring stick of male is all but gone. So it's not just competing with women. The way everyone's competing with each other, including men, is via a female rule book. It's kind of like you have to join women or you disappear. I'm not saying you have to, but that seems the struggle. It takes a, a lot of will to remain male. True. Very true. You touched on a, a number of different points here around fear, around sort of people's judgment as well. Uh, I suppose, you know, and, you know, advice to yourself. What would you give advice to your younger self? And what I found, and a lot of it was through boxing, but the majority of it was, you know, sort of mentorship from older men. I found that the difference between self-love and self-hate is fear. So if you can control your fear, you come to a place of acceptance. And you, you were talking about um, how you value other people's opinions, which, which is good, that's valid. But it's, it's the difference between valuing someone's opinion who you respect and the difference between you know, letting other people's, people define you. So it's about you know, stepping out of that box and you stop fearing judgment. And you don't get tangled up in the bullshit. You, you stop wanting to punish other people. You stop punishing yourself. You know, so it's... Uh, you were talking about younger guys. When you talk to younger guys and they, they parrot back memes, that's coming from a place of fear. Because it's... You know, I could go back to my younger self and give them advice. But the thing is, if I told them the truth, if I told them about all the good stuff, and then I told them about all the bad stuff, he wouldn't be able to handle it. It'd break him. Because, you know, and he'd be reacting to the world as it is, as opposed to how it was, because he'd have no frame of reference for that. So 
there's a lot of unknowns for men now. You know, like you say about competing with women. Well, my generation, they weren't competing with them. Right. You know, they didn't even turn up to the turn up to the start line. It's, right. It was mm. just in place. You go into a workplace. You know, I, I used to work on building sites. I used to work in gyms, all the rest of it. And when I walked into an office for the first time in my 20s, it, that's what it was. It was walking into a matriarchy. And I didn't understand the rules, but it was all established. And you took a back step as a man. You, it was like a bull in a china shop. So it's, you know, that's all I've known. I've known any different. So, yeah. You know, that was, a, a, that was a good way of putting it. How, how did you put it at the start about um, uh, fear? The difference between self-love and self-hate is fear. So if you can control your fear, you come to a place of acceptance. And it's true. And, you know, a lot of guys today, they get very inflexible, they're very dogmatic in their beliefs. And that just makes them easy targets because you can just pair it back to them what they want to hear. They can just get turned out. They're, they're easily manipulated. That's with women. That's from other men. I've seen all the time guys in gangs inside. You know, it's you have to have a very, very strict vetting process. And you've got to employ that. You, you've, you've got to be constantly aware of that. You've got to check in. Like what you're talking about there is flexibility and the way that you approach people, the way that you approach situations. You know, you, you've got to have that kind of vision because if you don't, you're going to get taken advantage of as a man. You don't get second chances as a man. Yeah, or very few from which you can come back from. If you're a fly on the wall, and you're following um, one of your boxer friends or guys that are in the gym. Like, I'm trying to picture a guy who's very kind of physically self-assured. And if you just follow that guy around, some of the men's community might say, oh, yeah, he's a tough guy. Look at him. But then all of a sudden, he'd switch and he'd comply to his woman's wishes. And then they'd say, ah, he's just bending over for her like he's not a real man. No, like, there is the flexibility of as long as he's respected and he's not taken advantage of, that he will provide protection and whatever to his kids, to his wife, to his community. But the, the whole point of being a man today isn't to lock yourself in the cage and just hold, hoard all the goodies for yourself and watch everyone around you perish. Um, that doesn't make for a very, uh, it's not very sustainable. Yeah. Even for you in your own life, like later when you get older, you're not going to have anyone around you. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's worked for me is, like, I've never given advice to a guy, a younger bloke, just off the bat. I've waited for him to come to me. And the only way that that happens is by just meeting him halfway, getting him involved in something at a community level. You know, yeah. all I'm asking from him is his input and his commitment. I'm asking for some investment. I'm asking him to step up and, you know, be a mentor to the other guys. That just happens organically. Then they come to me and they talk. And it's from their perspective, and I've got to understand their perspective. You know, I've got to ask questions. I've got to get to the core of it. And then that bond develops. You know, you've got to show up through actions first. Then they'll trust you. That's an interesting thing. Uh, Karuna has talked about this, uh, meeting people halfway. I think that's an art that's lost today. Um, generally, women find it hard to, but men have now, again, because it's the female script out there, no one's meeting anyone halfway. And yep. they're, they're, they're kind of complaining about the relationships aren't working out according to my view. Like it's a, it's a one-way street. Like there's very little of the heart meeting halfway or compromising, as Boffin mentioned at the start of the conversation. Uh, that's, a, that, that's an interesting point of view where you said you let the guy come to you. you if a person has a problem, you listen to them. You know, it's the, the spotlight's on them. It's the, they're on stage. Let them express themselves. They actually have got the courage enough to express what's bothering them. They want to be heard. But if you just talk at them right away, if you, you every person in the world just wants to make every conversation about them, every conversation is self-referential, then of course you can't relate to people because no one's seeing anyone else. No one's hearing anyone else. So that ability to meet people halfway is, is kind of a lost art, I think. Yeah, it has a big effect on young men because they've never experienced that before. And I'll say it with older men as well. You know, they've never had someone actually sit down and listen to them. And it all comes pouring out. They'll tell you the whole life story. And it's, it's, it's saddening. It is sad. But um, 
Yeah, it's you know, it's funny. You know, people can't bond over ideology. Funny that. It actually has to be human <laughs> connection. <laughs> Only if it's the wrong ideology. Well, I think people do bond over ideologies when there's kind of very little else. Uh, you're talking about advice and things that um, you wish you had known when you were younger. Well, that, that's one of the main things is that, you know, you've got to think outside the box. You've got to question everything. And, you know, language is manipulation. And you've got to have those parameters set, otherwise you will get manipulated. If, if you think outside the narrative, outside the parameters that other people have set for you and start asking questions, that when, that's when you see the broader picture. You know, I say to young guys I, I train with, I say, you know, there's a whole world out there. You know, it's not just your neighbourhood. It's not just the people putting pressure on you day to day. It's not just your family. Like you, you get them to try and look outside the box. You know, talk about experiences and this and that and bring in other older guys as well. And they get more perspectives and that's missing because once they start to in, in a real life situation where they can sit down and listen to men and ask them questions you know, that that tends to pique their interest they get a broader perspective that way isn't that amazing i was just thinking about you mentioned boundaries how i imagine back in the day you didn't really need to develop boundaries to such an, a low extent as as a guy i'd imagine before you, your boundaries would really have a long fuse to the point where your boundaries would be there right before a fight would start. Like that's where your boundaries were, where it reached the point where you're going to have your fists up and you're going to punch the person out and get into a bar fight. But everything underneath that, you really didn't need boundaries because socially we were more respectable. We respected the boundaries of social etiquette, pleases and thank yous. You don't do this to the person. This isn't fair. This isn't moral. This will not get you the respect of other people. But now we have to lo like we have to have boundaries for everything, like all the way through the human experience. We just have to be neurotically vigilant with boundaries left and right. Whereas before, I'd imagine as a guy, like you really only had to have really um, solid boundaries to the point of you know just before a fight broke out. But now you've got boundaries all the way below that. Boffin and I had a discussion on this one night of society's boundaries and etiquette and everything else. And all that seems to have been taken away. And now what used to be society's boundaries and then your own personal boundaries, now your personal boundaries have to be expanded out around you to create what society used to have as boundaries. Yeah, you have to respect everyone's personal boundaries now. People within um, my private life who work in schools, but every single kind of kid needs to be accommodated, every level. You have to teach every kid specifically. There's not one curriculum that everyone needs to meet to sort of um, socially be on the same page. Every person gets taught in their own little bubble, has their own needs, and the, the government insists on it. Yeah, that's all Western countries. Uh, my son was in the gifted children's uh, uh, kind of course schedule, and they used to actually have competitions across the nation for gifted children, and he was in the last one. And then they got rid of it because it, it uh, apparently it, the other kids, it would make them feel like they weren't the elite. Because they weren't. Fuck. Exactly. It's, it's going back to like, I like Superman because he was better than everyone else and it gave me a clear Everest. There's the peak. I'm not there. I'm here at the bottom. And even if I work my way up, there's a lot of honor in going towards that path. You know, but there's a good barometer of like a good human being or, or something to aim for. They've kind of just like flattened Everest and like, oh, you're all on top of Everest now. No, you're not. Yeah, you're on your way. You'll get here. Don't worry. You know, a little while ago when Spetsnaz kind of got choppy, I thought New Zealand had dropped off the web and I was thinking, oh, well, they're not important anyway. <laughs> With most white country on earth, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's a funny thing is like when you, when you think of the men in New Zealand, I just think of like they're more masculine than most Western countries. But then you look at the, the political structure and your, and your last prime minister, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, wokeness in your country. It's kind of funny how those dichotomies exist on the same plane. Yeah, well, they've got a she'll be right attitude. She'll be right, mate. Well, she might be. You keep yeah. rolling over, she might be. 
But um, it's interesting in the school dynamic as well. I know a lot of teachers and, um, yeah, I, I know guys coming up now, they've never had a male teacher. They've never had a male teacher during their entire schooling. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a rarity now. It just doesn't exist. They just get indoctrinated from day one. Well, this is a thing. Like, uh, guys who are kind of uh, bigger and tougher, they've got thicker skins and nothing – they've got a longer fuse and it takes a lot for them to get bothered. They're not hyper vigilant because they're very calm and self assured and strong, both mentally and physically. A lot of it is self assurance, and I, I think Spetsnaz can agree with me. Once you, when you have like combat training, you know what you're capable of, so you don't you don't want to ever get to that point, and you tend to diffuse situations. I've I've had people say things to me like, "You're this and you're that, and you're blah blah blah," and I simply tell them. I agree with you, and it, and it diffuses the situation. Yeah, I could I could easily look. You can picture a guy who's a a black belt in some martial arts or a boxer or something, um, a very masculine guy, strong. I could easily picture him not being bothered by women at all. And whereas someone who's hyper vigilant and ha and knows every rule book in the manosphere. He's going, oh, my God, he's not worried about that. He just let his woman do this. He's not bothered by it. You wait. She's going to take advantage of him. Yeah. Uh, probably not, and he doesn't care. And I, I, I can tell you which guy's life I would rather have just because of the quality of my mental state. <laughs> <laughs> would I rather be a hypervigilant, academic, neurotic kind of person that knows everything about relationships and is like a twitching bird? you know, turning his head left and right at every moment with women? Or would I rather be some, you know, some very simple guy that resembles an elephant that's not bothered by anything? Yeah, and I mean, most of those guys are cowards. I, I don't mean that in a derogatory term, but just around women, around their own mothers, I've seen them. They're, yeah, they're, in terms of expressing themselves um, emotionally, psychologically, philosophically, they're crickets. They can't articulate they're yep. scared to, and they yep. wouldn't know where to begin. They're just. Well, you mean the the Big Island guys? Yeah, the Big Island guys, Maori guys, and white guys as well. Um, it's just they've never done it before. You know, they they don't have the capacity to do it, and they're scared to do it. You, you got to try and coax that out of them. Whenever a woman walks into the into the room, they just they bow their heads. You know. Yeah. That's a culture. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's sad. It's sad. I, I, on, the, on the other hand, he may understand that arguing with her isn't going to accomplish a damn thing. I, I think that goes back to a point that you and, and Carew were talking about earlier, human, which is kind of fascinating to me. You, you were talking about um, how, how people are much more comfortable with physical intimacy than emotional intimacy. And, you know, the idea, if you think about the implications of that, it, it really is kind of a bizarre inversion to think that in, in today's world, people are much more comfortable getting naked physically with one another than they are emotionally with one another. And I, and I think that really tells you a lot about what's going on in, in people's heads. Th there's this hesitancy like like Spetz was just saying, there's this real deficiency in in the ability of a lot of men to to sit down with a woman and express himself openly and honestly, to to have these ex exchanges of ideas that I think we all are, are agree are important to have a good relationship, but it, it's almost like they're completely stinted. They're they're almost embarrassed. To open their mouths and say, "This is what I think." Yeah, it's almost like everyone today is like really focused on performing. How you perform in the bedroom, how your business performs, how my relationship performs, like rather than just kind of showing up and enjoying it and being you. Uh, and and so I think it's easy to hide in the performance of a relationship or hide in the performance of like flicking left and right on Tinder and look, look, I'm a success because I'm performing well here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. are you actually, are you always wearing a mask? Are you always performing? If all I need to do is pop a, a blue pill and I'm performing really well with random strangers, is that really a measure of performance? 
when do you drop the mask? When do you say, fuck it, I just want to be as comfortable hanging out with myself as I am with the person I'm with me? Or am I always having to perform wherever I am? And that performance anxiety, I think, contributes to a lot of guys just shutting down, not having the self-esteem. An extreme version of that would no intellectual or emotional intimacy, but all physical. It's also the easiest thing to do, too. There's nothing really involved. When you wake up next to some girl in the morning and you can't even remember her name, that's that's like the extreme version of that. It's, it's interesting, you know, the kind of community that I grew up in. Um, everybody watched everybody else and watched how they, how they spoke and how they act, acted. Everybody was judged. They, you had to conform because if you stepped outside of those norms, bad things would happen. Uh, talking about gang culture and all the rest of it. So say if uh, a woman got beaten or what, ha what have you, the neighbour would come and check on her and she'd have to go along with the narrative. I got hit by a car. He didn't hit me. Oh, you poor thing. So there was always a... Uh, you're always being watched, you're always being monitored. And it's, it's interesting, that's happened now. It's sort of, people now, are, uh, they've got to conform to whatever the, the social narrative is. If they step outside of that, they, they fear social judgment more than virtually anything else. Yeah. So you're right, it's all performance. Do you find, do you f share this confusion? Like I find this confusing where, say you've got it, like say now, like the whole trans thing and all that, everyone wants to be understood and loved, but at the same time they go, don't judge me. It's like, I, I need to discern you, I need to judge you, I need to value you and make sense of you to be able to embrace you or understand you or talk with you, but you won't allow me to, you don't want me to judge you at all, yet you want to have relationships from a distance where no one can judge you. Like, for me, judgment is discernment, judgment is me reflecting on personal value do i like you or not i feel comfortable around you why i don't feel comfortable around you why like judgment is natural and and what you mentioned about uh socially social judgment is an extension of that like personal judgment multiplied and agreed upon um so i, I don't know if any of you guys have thought about that the, the the hypocrisy of don't judge me but understand me and it's kind of like, how the fuck am I supposed to understand you if I can't judge you? I, I think that's part of the whole gynocentric thing, the whole think like a woman, because we're all frenemies now. It just doesn't make sense to me. It was interesting. Um, there was a big protest uh, in New Zealand recently, happened in the park. And it was a woman, she came there to speak on behalf of women. I right? just saying that, okay, well, women are being jails by trans men and she wanted to speak out against that <laughs> and there was a woman there and she was an elderly woman and all these trans rights gay activists turned up and this guy he bashed her face in like he, he fractured her orb orbital socket he, he smashed her face right in right on camera he hasn't been arrested like it's uh, it, yeah and, and they completely drowned out women's voices you know, they, them, uh, as opposed to women's voices. So uh, women are going right off, but they've been completely drowned out by the media. Politicians won't comment on it. It's, it's fascinating to watch. Women's voices have been drowned out. Uh, I kind of, uh, I, I've always sh shaken my head where women have allowed femininity to disappear. And all these women just agreed and nod their heads and just cast away femininity. And all the specific sort of strengths and, and differentiation they had in terms of being able to contribute to a society and do things that men couldn't do and paint it as weakness and paint it as, oh, you're a slave in the kitchen or you're whatever it is, you know. And like now slowly, because they went down that path and agreed with the political correctness and all the wokeness, then they had to let in all these, you know, they had to let in a man into their women's sport and beat them and had to not nod their head because they basically, they've crossed that path and they have to allow that. Otherwise they'd look stupid. And a woman's not going to say sorry and say, yeah, I made a mistake. No, women have to just keep going down the path now that they've agreed upon because none of them are going to, like we talked about before, say, oh, I screwed up. I'm sorry. Let's wind it back. I made a mistake. No woman's going to do that. So all they do is charge forward and allow femininity and their own voice and their own world to be smothered. I don't think a lot of them actually um, realize 
how a woman's world is just getting harder and harder. And they yeah. think women, like, you know, in Beyonce's voice, women are ruling the world, but they're not. Any kind of place that they had in society is gone in a personal level. They're only a tool socially to be able to turn the dials the way politically they want it to turn. But um, in every woman's life, uh, I think the metrics of happiness with women are sort of, they'll say they're happy when they're young and they can do anything they want. They can earn a lot of money on OnlyFans. But I say when when you start appreciating what it is to be a human being at midlife and you appreciate honest connections and friendships and what you're doing with your life and responsibility and you appreciate that you don't have as much life in front of you and you want to be real about things, it's too late then. By that time, the young girl realizes, oh, I might have screwed up, but she can't admit she was wrong. So she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yep. I, I got two comments, one in relation to Spetsnaz's comment. I, I hate to be a cynical old man, but if I was there, I would have asked her first time. And as far as humans comment, yeah, they you want to be a man, um, you got to give up your seat on the bus. There's a certain satisfaction in that whole dynamic about um, what's happening with the trans community and women, because Rock Rockin and I have had this conversation a couple of times when when we were young and 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 feminism was in full bloom and had really taken root in in the social order. The the dogma from the feminist community was women can do everything that men can do, and and sometimes they'd carry it a step further and say they can do it better, and and all of the misogynist young men at the time realized how asinine that was because we we knew that there were certain jobs that women couldn't do, and I think most rational men at the time didn't have a problem with women coming into the workforce based on merit. But it was when they they changed the rules, for instance, firefighters, where there were physical requirements that, you know, a guy had to pass in order to become a firefighter or a policeman. They they bent the rules and and pretended that that women were just the same as men. And and now to see this come full circle, I have to admit, I'm not proud of it, but I have to admit there's a certain satisfaction in <laughs> in this lunacy coming full circle. It's it's. I was watching a um, podcast about this with uh, Matt Walsh yesterday. The level of unsophistication to kind of see the chess game that's being played out, that how women are made to look foolish, and they don't even realize it, but they think they're made to look powerful, where the, the trans women, like women are supporting them. Oh, that's a real woman. We'll put... Um, Chris Jenner on the cover of Woman of the Year, and that's the Woman of the Year, a trans woman. Why are you just happy with being a trans woman? Why do you have to be a woman? Up until yesterday, we all knew that A, a was A, B was B, C was C, and we could relate to them and get along with them, but now we need to take over definitions and erase definitions, and this is actually the same as this when it's really not. And we have problems with it where you get a... A, guy, a, a biological guy beating every single woman. It's not sometimes, all the time. And if you refuse, like a spoiled little child, to realize that that's wrong and you, you have to adhere to your I ideology and say, no, no, wokeness and feminism and everything's the same, I can't help you. Sink with the ship. I'm not saving you. I'm sorry. Like, there's only so much sympathy you can give them. You know, you can tell a child... A child says, like, I'm I'm Superman. It's all right, Jimmy, you're Superman, fine. But then when Jimmy is like a 21-year-old still wearing his underwear on the outside of his pants with a cape, it's like, Jimmy, enough. Like, you go to a psych ward or you're part of the real world. I'm sorry. Choose. Women have always been envious of what they know they're not. And they're fundamentally not men. So everything that men can do, they're envious of. But, but I, 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 I get it, but really. at the same time, just seeing men encroach in their world and beat them at everything, the degree to which you don't want to defend the base of your gender, like, amazes me. Like, you well, still get why, men... Go ahead. But, but why would they? Because men are fundamentally better women. 
<laughs> no, 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 I, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Why do you think a lot of men prefer to date trans women or prefer to have, uh, well, what was the term that like, femboys boys or whatever? Because they, because because the ones that do engage in that type of degeneracy, they date in sexier clothes than women do. They act more feminine than women do. They keep the house tidier than women do. They cook better than women do. So even men are better at being women than women are. Guru, I hate to tell you, none of the other guys here think any of those things. It's just you. <laughs> By what you said, me and Spetsnaz have a lot of uh, overlap when it comes to the type of fucked up that we like when it comes to women. And and I'd ask him, but between spending your time with a crazy tattooed chick and just a normal ass gay dude and having a beer, which one would you prefer? Oh, the gay dude. Any day of the week. Well, th- there you go. <laughs> you, you don't even need to take it as far as to put a dress on the on the person. Like it, oh, well, I wouldn't, fu- I wouldn't fuck him. But, obviously, um, yes, I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, in, in terms of who would you rather spend your time with, like, why go for the, why go for the crazy, even if it has the right bits that fit? I'd rather spend my time with the other person and just have a normal-ass conversation. It is, and, and some of the, the gay guys I know, probably most of them, they, they fit that category. I mean, they're, they're just so easy to get along with. And, I mean, their relationships last for years. That's why they've got such low rates of domestic violence, you know, they get on so well. Unlike the other type of, uh, of gay couple that uh, apparently beats each other into a pulp every day. <laughs> Just because they have the different bits down there. In my experience, two ex-wives, they were better at spending money. <laughs> <laughs> did you, and, the Rocket, did you, you know, some of the character traits that caused you two to break apart. Did you notice any of them? At the beginning, in the first couple of years, or did they reveal themselves, or did she actually change Absolutely. later? No, what? she didn't change it. Uh, the character traits just hyper emphasize themselves. Uh, in the second marriage, we were both very arrogant, and it 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 caused problems. The first time we had uh, any confrontation, neither side wanted to back down. Yeah, that that I could see being a danger for someone who, say, gets married or has a relationship the first time. They do things in a very authentic way, like the, the way they feel like they're being honest and giving and genuine. They get so badly hurt that the next time they say, fuck this, I'm being selfish, I don't give a shit, I'm just going to be arrogant. And you find someone else that's open enough to just be an arsehole as well. Gun way. Yeah, and it's kind of like, that, that's even worse, I'd say, because then you think, oh, I'm being brave. I've got no fear anymore. But you're not actually showing up as you. You kind of locked away the five-year-old or the real person, and it's kind of like you're putting on this brave act. And uh, it, I don't think you can sustain it because you aren't really there. 